Hello everyone, welcome, I'm Philip Magnus, and this is not going to be one of my superbly edited uh, book videos, as much as it's going to be a short discussion of Briar Rose by Jane Yolen. This book is not so much a retelling of the Sleeping Beauty fairy tale, even though plenty of people might try and tell you that it is. What Jane Yolen does here is she uses the story of Sleeping Beauty as a framing device that allows the author to create a heart-aching tale, a tribute, in fact, to the horrors of the Holocaust. This novel is Yolen's attempt to contribute, as far as her considerable talents allow her, to making certain that we, all of us, all of humanity, never forget the horrors of the Holocaust that uh, Nazism unleashed upon the world. Let's read the blurb, shall we? Ever since she was a child, Rebecca has been enchanted by her grandmother Gemma's stories about Briar Rose, but a promise Rebecca makes to her dying grandmother will lead her on a remarkable journey to uncover the truth of Gemma's astonishing claim, I am Briar Rose, a journey that will lead her to unspeakable brutality and horror but also to redemption and hope. So you see, the story of Briar Rose, of Sleeping Beauty, is the framing device that lets us in on a mystery, but not the kind of mystery you'll read in any cheap airport thriller. The mystery at the heart of Briar Rose will likely be uh, familiar to many of you. It seeks to answer such questions as where does my family come from? Who was this person who meant the entire world to me? The only fantastic element you will discover in this entire book is the survival of one young woman where no women survived in the Nazi execution camp of Chelmno in Poland. And I can promise you there is no wave of a magic wand to make any of the horrors, any of the brutalities seem any less real. No, the accent is on bringing this horror of the Holocaust, of the World War, into the fore of uh, making certain that we never forget it. A lot of this is done only once we get two-thirds into the novel. Yolen deploys a story within the story, this one, told not by Gemma's granddaughter, Rebecca, but by Jacob, who is himself a Pole from a wealthy, vaguely aristocratic uh, Christian family, well-educated and a member of the intelligentsia in the 1930s, who chose to make Berlin his home before everything turned into a living hell. Someone who was comfortable enough in his privilege to think that uh, the events, what was going on with uh, the Jews and the Gypsies and uh, Jehovah's Witnesses and Communists, would simply pass him by. That they would not come for him, regardless of his sexuality. Which, of course, eventually happens. It is for his sexual preferences that Joseph is dragged into a concentration camp, the Sackenhausen labor camp, as it was called. And I will read you the quote now. If you could ask Joseph Pataki to describe himself before he entered Sackenhausen, he would have said, I'm a Pole educated in Cambridge, a poet and playwright, a member of the minor aristocracy, a man of literate tastes, master of five languages. Polish, German, English, French and Italian, and a gourmet cook. He would never have mentioned sexual preferences. That was no one's business but his own. Besides, he was quite aware of family, honour, which demanded an heir, an abstract concept he was prepared to deal with in the future. After Sackenhausen, he would have said, I'm a fag. Not gay. There was nothing gay about being a homosexual in that place. Nothing sexual either. Like the other men, he lost all desire for anything but staying alive. The option of rehabilitation was tricky. If a night in a brothel proved one could not perform with a prostitute, one would be castrated. Joseph preferred to take his chances with the beatings and tortures. It is this brutal honesty 
with which Jane Yolen describes her fictionalized account of the brutalities and the trivialized, and I speak here in the sense that these horrors were trivialized by the Nazis, not by Jane Yolen, that you can expect to uh, come face to face with in this last third of the novel, in this story within the story. And so I loved following along with Becker's own um, chasing down of the mystery of her grandmother. It is this last third, in many ways, that is the most important one. Far harder to read, certainly. Before, before I read Joseph's story, I would have described this as a book that you couldn't put down. After I read it, and as I read it, in fact, until completion, it is a book that you will need to put down now and again. It is a remarkable novel and an important one, and it recalled to my mind my 14 or was it 16 year old self reading The Book Thief by Marcus Yusuf and coming face to face with the horrible reality of the Second World War again and again. And that is one of the values of fiction, after all. It allows us to examine and to empathize with great horrors when done right, when done correctly, when done with compassion and understanding and without flinching away from the terrible things that took place. It is a book of value and you should read it. Thanks for watching.